Welcome. In a previous video, I did an unboxing of this uh, PlusTech ePhoto Z300. And in this video, I'm going to go over the setup. So I have this plugged into my Mac right now via USB. And I'll switch over to the screen here. And it comes with a DVD or CD. I don't know what it is. Um, but I'm going to download the software from their website. So I just Googled PlusTech downloads. And um, I chose ePhoto series on the left here and then the ePhoto Z300. And I have on a Mac, so I'm going to choose this Mac version here. And I'll click download. Okay, now I'll open my downloads folder. I'll double click on the installer. Okay, the installation was successful. I'll close this. Okay, so I'll open the software here. Okay, it says insert a photo to start scanning. Add files by opening files button or drag and drop files. Okay. It says please connect the scanner. So I have it connected, I just need to turn it on. Hit OK. It says the scan cannot be proceeded because the required scanner calibration data is not found in the system. Please calibrate first. So I'll hit OK. It says calibrate the scanner if colors appear in areas that should be white or colors of scanned image and original vary a lot. So I'll insert the calibration sheet and hit start. Okay, so here's the sheet. I didn't mention in the unboxing, this does flip open. I imagine you want to keep that clean because it comes with a cleaning cloth. I'll stick this in here and then I'll hit start. It says calibration is complete. I'll hit OK. So now I'll scan a photo. So the orientation you need to put this in is you need to have it face down and you need the top to be down also. So I'll stick it in like this. And now the photo showed up on my computer. I can open it. Okay, I'll hit back. Let me scan another one. As far as I know, I should be able to scan anywhere on this. And now this photo is a portrait mode. Okay, so I've scanned a number of photos here. So let me see if I can hit this output here. It says I can output to print, email, or I can share. I can hit save. It says, do you want to save the files? You'll not be able to edit the images again. I'll hit OK. And then it looks like there's this ePhoto doc folder. It created under documents. Here we go. So now we have all of the images saved. That one is upside down. I may have stuck that one in upside down. That'd be something I'll need to get used to using this. It would be best to not have to uh, flip these around after you scan. It's because you could lose a little quality if it has to re-encode everything. You can also go into preferences here and we can hit scan and save directly to, um, and it looks like it's at ephoto underscore doc folder. And then you can change the JPEG quality here also. I'll hit OK. So now I'll, I'll actually scan these in kind of a weird orientation so I know that they're new. Okay, I ran into a little issue there. I stuck this one in. Uh, while the other one was still running, so that was not a good idea. <laughs> okay.
Okay. So now I'll go into my finder here, and it did not save those automatically. Hmm. What happens if I close this? So it didn't appear to save those automatically in this folder. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm in the wrong folder. No, well, that's the right folder. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Let me hit save here. And it looks like it's just telling me to use that same folder again. Okay, maybe I'm doing it wrong or maybe something's broken, I don't know. So um, we can go over here. We have the cabinet here, which is uh, looks like it's the folder. And then this is for saving the files. This is for opening the files. So you can add files to this if you're not scanning them from some other source. Um, then you have the share and then you have the trash can and then you have rotate here. So if we go up to the top, there's a little help icon and there's a gear. If we click on this gear, we see the color is uh, color or gray. And then resolution, you have 300 or 600. So I'll actually choose 600. We'll try that. Um, and then it says auto crop and auto deskew, and then apply quick fix. So I'll hit OK there. So I'll stick in one of these photos at 600. So you see at 600, it's quite a bit slower. It was quite a bit slower to show up in the application here too. So let's save these out. Okay. So there's that. Let's see if I can find the other one that looked similar. Okay, so here I have the two photos, one scanned at 300 DPI and it is 241 kilobytes and then the 600 DPI is 766 kilobytes. So if I open both of them up using Quick View here, which on a Mac you just hit spacebar and it'll show you like a preview of it. We can see the two images here. They're slightly skewed from each other. Interestingly, it's the larger one, I think, has a weird line in the middle right here. I'm not sure what caused that. Yeah, you can see it going all the way down. Whereas the 300 DPI one doesn't have that. I'm not sure what caused that. But uh, I can open these up also in preview. And we can zoom in. So you can see with these photos, the 600 dpi doesn't really add much to it, I don't think. These photos just aren't that sharp, so... These photos I would probably just scan at 300. I'd, um, you know, I'm not going to blow these up and turn them into a poster or anything. So. so I'll put a link in the description to this scanner, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.